And Esfeld, who joins us from the Greek capital Athens. Bill is the Associate Children's Rights Director at Human Rights Watch. Bill, thank you very much indeed for your time. What is your organization doing to help children to put pressure on Israel not to target civilians, to just try to damage, limit the damage that is being done on those who are under 18? Yeah, thank you for focusing on the absolutely catastrophic um, conditions for children in the Gaza Strip. It's not just the bombings. Uh, more than 1,500 children have already been killed uh, in the Gaza Strip. And, and I should just say that more than 20 have been killed in the West Bank. And we're also seeing forcible transfers of entire communities in the West Bank. And that's affecting children there, too. So it shouldn't be forgotten. But the, the catastrophe in the Gaza Strip is in part due to um, inherently indiscriminate use of high explosive weapons in very densely populated areas. That's one issue. But what happens with the children who are not killed but who are wounded? Um, the blockade of Gaza, the complete illegal collective punishment that has cut off all electricity for the last 10 days, that has cut off water, um, medical aid is not getting in. I mean, we are going to see more and more children dying uh, because they can't get treatment. And even the wounded are not being allowed out. Pregnant women are not being able to get um, emergency obstetric care. Wounded children are not able to get out for the medical care they so desperately need. Um, we've never seen anything like this, and we have to call it for what it is. These are war crimes of collective punishment that are occurring in a context of apartheid. Bill, is there anything that Human Rights Watch can do? Presumably, your organization is not very popular at all with the Israeli government. It's Human Rights Watch, amongst other groups that have said Israel operates an apartheid system. And if that's the view of Human Rights Watch, apartheid systems don't care for the minorities. There's, we are basically pulling every lever we can possibly access. And as you say, our leverage with the Israeli authorities directly is limited. Um, however, we have to remind them, and we would like the International Criminal Court prosecutor also to forcefully remind all the parties that war crimes are not going to be forgotten. Um, we are doing our documentation to build up evidence of what's going on. But I think the most important single thing that could happen right now, and apart from uh, uh, pressure to stop unlawful use of force, is to end the blockade. And here the American authorities have got a huge role to play. It is absolutely pathetic that only 20 trucks of aid were negotiated to get into Gaza and they still haven't even started rolling. Even if they did, that would be a drop in the ocean of what is needed. Israel has got to turn back on the electricity because without electricity and without fuel, Gaza's hospitals, as the International Committee of the Red Cross has said, are going to turn into morgues. We have already got reports of a doctor receiving two two wounded children, but having only one ventilator to choose between them. And so medical staff in that uh, emergency room had to watch one child die so that the other one could get that uh, access to that ventilator. We've got reports of children who are being operated on without anesthesia. Their homes were bombed. They had multiple fractures. They can't get painkillers. I mean, this is absolutely so unconscionable that the United States must not stand behind it. Bill, I know that you don't want to get involved in politics, but I just want to uh, suppose something in terms of a child's development. A child, hopefully, will become an adult, and presumably, quite a few of Gazans who are prepared to fight against the Israeli state, who are prepared to put their lives on the line so that their children can have a better future, they were kids at one stage. And if they were living in Gaza as children, as they grew up, they may have come to some sort of conclusions in their minds about their lives and what is going to happen in the decades to come. But having said that, surely it's incumbent on the adults on both sides to find a resolution here because their kids are then going to go through the same thing if they don't find a resolution. Is there anything that Human Rights Watch has seen that could be an indicator that yes, people have understood what's happening and that at this moment, it is the moment to look ahead to the future, to find a resolution so those kids don't become the next generation of fighters. 
This is a crucial question. Let me try and answer it this way. There are um, very courageous Israeli as well as Palestinian human rights groups. But, you know, I'm, we're focusing now on, on what the Israeli side is thinking. There are incredibly courageous uh, Israeli human rights groups who've called for a ceasefire and who are also documenting uh, what's been going on in, in the Gaza Strip and demanding an end to it. There's a history of a small number of Israeli, um, you know, very, very brave people who, who have been trying to um, end this conflict. Not not through some sort of fake uh, both sidesism, but who are really focusing on on the war crimes that um, you know their own uh, uh, fellows are, are, have been perpetrating in, in in the IDF. Let me also just say this: uh, the idea of collective punishment of Gaza is is disastrously wrong. It's illegal. It's immoral. It's a crime. But let's also think of you know. Who's being punished here? Half of the population of the Gaza Strip wasn't even alive when Hamas came to power. You know, we're really going to punish them. Um, how many schools have been bombed and destroyed and were never able to be rebuilt fully? How many classrooms are missing given the growth of the population of kids in the Gaza Strip over the last 16 years? How many hospitals have been bombed with complete impunity, even though this is a grave abuse against children? We've got to end the impunity, impunity for these sorts of uh, war crimes that's been happening for, for many, many, many years. Um, otherwise, what are kids supposed to think about their future? Bill Van Esveld, thank you very much indeed, Bill. Really appreciate your time.